This is a 56 years old lady with type 2 diabetes, hypertension and hyperlipidemia with a BMI of 38. Uh, she's undergoing a Roux and Y gastric bypass today. Uh, the indication is morbid obesity and type 2 diabetes. Uh, we've made her to have a pre-operative weight loss about 4 kilograms uh, and we'll see how the liver is like today and uh, we'll go through surgery. Thank you. Here, uh, all trocars are inserted under direct vision. So the 1012 trocar that you see is the opti trocar is actually inserted about 20 centimeters from the xephoid sternum and about four or five centimeters lateral to the midline. And then the 5mm port that are inserted, one is an inserted almost peri-umbilical, uh, depending upon how to reach the gastroesophageal junction. The left-hand working port is generally on the inside marked by the junction of the two muscle layer unions, and you would have seen it in that. And the left port is inserted in the left hypochondrium, uh, easy to access. I follow a perigastric dissection. You can see the diagram of dissection. So the first vessel there, uh, first lesser curve uh, vessel, the second lesser curve vessel, you can see somewhere near there is where we create our pouch. Uh, the direction in which we cut along the lesser curve should follow the lesser curve. It is not uncommon that one gets distracted and heads cranially. So you land up with a tunnel which is very, very long and eventually uh, you learn that you have actually devascularized most of the lesser curve and as you go along the lesser curve here uh, you will meet vessels because they are both anterior and posterior vessels as you meet the vessels you may wish to burn the vessels uh, why do we preserve the vasculatures and the nerves on the lesser curve side is to basically preserve the continuity of the vessels and the nerve here you can see that we are in the lesser sac then you take a stapler i would normally aim the stapler towards the tip of the left shoulder so although i articulated it earlier a little bit of un -art uh, articulation undone so it's actually quite a slant cut aiming towards the tip of the left shoulder and that's the first staple fired you would get an entry dilate the gastrostomy using a right angle once dilated so sometimes there is a lot of fat along the posterior part of the stomach and you would need to dissect that out in order to get the pouch clear. It doesn't necessarily compromise blood supply because blood supply is coming from medial side. The next thing I do is I go down lower, I lay the patient a bit more flatter, uh, flip the greater omentum towards the head end uh, to expose the colon. Uh, in this particular patient, the omentum might be a little stuck and once you flip it, you can see the colon and it will prevent injury of the colon. After that, an entrotomy is made. Here you have to be very careful that your biliopancreatic limb and your elementary limb never flip. And that's why the cameraman should not move and you should never take your eyes over this limb. After making an entrotomy, I use a 30 centimeter articulated stapler bring this up in a anti-colic fashion, anti-colic, anti-gastric fashion. Uh, if it sometimes is shorter and it doesn't reach, I may even go retrogastric, but I have hardly done that one or two times. And I will make an anastomosis that is about slightly close to two centimeters, 1.5 to two centimeters. So you can see there, the stapler is two centimeters and we close it at that and fire the stapler there. Uh, because once we suture, we will suture it tight and you will have an anastomotic opening about 1, 1.5 centimeters somewhere there. Next, now we are going to separate the biliopancreatic limb from the elementary limb. Here you see in the diagram the gastrojejunosme, the elemental limb, BP limb and the direction of jejunal blood vessels. So you cut along the line in order to prevent any injury to the jejunal vessels and this is to keep the entire loop vascularized. So a mesenteric defect is created just next to the small jejunum there. Once you go on to the other side, it is dilated just like any other opening. I use a vascular reload here to transect the small uh, bowel. Once you've measured up to 100 centimeters, 
the common channel or the distal bowel is in the hand of the assistant. I hold the proximal or the elemental limb, create an entrostomy, dilate the entrostomy, do a side to side anastomosis using a 60 vascular reload again. So this is a bit tricky. You get to hold both loops of bowel, one in your stapler, one in the other hand. And once you engage the entrostomy and you've got both the jaws into the bowel, then the assistant will take over the biliopancreatic limb and uh, the surgeon will then handle the elemental limb or the common channel as is required. Now we're going to close the mesenteric mesenteric defect. So on the small bowel mesentery on this side and uh, of the biliopancreatic limb and of the afferent limb. So we start, I start and suture towards myself. Uh, some people would like to suture from distal against them. I find this to be a little bit more easier to me. You can see that the bowel lies at a nice angle and it's easily, easily drainable. So we do check our anastomosis for viability. We're using the Novodex system. ICG contrast has been given. You can see that changes in the gastric pouch and jejunum. Gastric pouch slightly delayed as compared to the jejunum, but it becomes really bright. Here, ICG concentration, you can see the vessels being highlighted very well. The liver quite profusely vascularized. Those little areas near the anastomosis need not worry about. And here is where the maximum concentration of dye is, generally used in cancer oncology surgery to detect lymph nodes. But just for the showing purpose, you can see that the maximum concentration is in the vessel that is supplying that artery that's supplying the gastric pouch. So a very well vascularized pouch and a well vascularized uh, jejunal loop. When you take out this liver retractor, it is important to note which direction the blade of the liver retractor is heading to. And this is because I have hooked my anastomosis, the gastrojejunostomy, and tore it before uh, while removing this liver retractor. Uh, with this, we come to the end of Who and Why Gastric Bypass. Thank you for watching.